Well, we've done all the NES Mega Man games. I figure it's time to finish Mega Man in time for Mega Man 11 in October. I liked all six Mega Man games, but the formula is becoming a little stale. This is where I would talk about the Mega Man X series, but it seems everyone has done Mega Man X, so I'm gonna wait to do my own till next year, maybe. With the Mega Man X Legacy Collection, they might be teasing a Mega Man X9, and fingers crossed that it does happen. It's been nearly 15 years since X8! But anyway, back on topic. What can I say about Mega Man 7? It's the first and only classic Mega Man title on the Super Nintendo, which means we've gone 16-bit, and... Well, Mega Man 7 is really, really expensive. If you want to get a copy of Mega Man 7, expect to pay upwards of $200. Fortunately, there are ways around that. You can get the game on the Wii U Virtual Console, or you can get it on the Mega Man Legacy Collection. Well, the second one. However, I managed to snag a copy of the SNES version thanks to a local classic game store having a copy, and having lots and lots of store credit. Welcome to the shelf, buddy. So that tradition of having authentic footage for these classic games will continue. Now then, let's just play the game. The story of Mega Man 7 begins with an opening that recasts what happened at the end of Mega Man 6. Mega Man has finally imprisoned Dr. Wily for all his crimes, and so peace will reign. But we still have three more classic games to go after this, so that won't last. Dr. Wily knew that his schemes could end in failure, so thus he set a contingency plan. If he was not to contact four robots after six months, they would activate. Now, let me tell you this. That opening gets you pumped up to play the game. So now we have an opening stage for the first time in the classic series history, and I like this addition as it helps add to the game. We get a cutscene of Mega Man rolling auto speeding along to the speed of the crime. Mega Man has to go on foot, so it's time to put your helmet on and. Yeah. Yeah, that's more like it. So Mega Man finds Dr. Light, who points out that Dr. Wily has escaped. Yeah, some security force. Mega Man makes his way and meets up with a new robot named Base and his robot dog, Trouble, who tell Mega Man that they've been fighting Wily while he was gone. Mega Man is left to ponder the identity of this new robot. There actually is a bit more of a narrative this time around compared to the 8-bit games, as there are much more cutscenes. Now, some might think this gets in the way, but I enjoy having a narrative. It helps keep you engaged in what's going on. Sometimes it's a little unnecessary, like how every time you beat a boss, Mega Man teleports back to Dr. Light and asks how the weapon works. Wasn't it just so much easier when they just showed you what the weapon would do after you got it? It was easy, quick, and to the point. But I can see how they're trying to make the story a more integral part of the experience. So to start off the game after the opening level, we get four stages. Just four, huh? That's different, I'll give them that. What can I say about Mega Man himself? He controls fine, he can still slide along and charge his buster. I noticed that Mega Man will now hold his buster out while he charges it. Not really sure I care for this addition, as it looks awkward for Mega Man to be jumping while performing the charge shot. What I will say about the boss's weapons, I like these weapons. They are very useful. The Thunderbolt reminds me of the Elect Beam from Mega Man 1, and the Danger Rod can be used to get rid of those annoying spikes that shoot along the ground. So long and farewell, you annoying gizmos! What about new additions to Mega Man 7? Well, for starters, you now have these bolts that appear from dropped enemies at times, and what are they? They're currency! By pressing select on the stage select, Mega Man will go to Auto's shop. Here you can trade in bolts for items. I mostly use them to trade in for energy tanks. Rather than being able to keep up the 9 tanks, you're limited to 4, but now you can get 4 weapon tanks that refill your weapon energy. I'm not sure I appreciate this change, and it's going to become very apparent that you're going to miss having up to 9 energy tanks when we get to the end. There are also these items that you can buy to increase Mega Man's moveset, but they are very expensive. Much like this game. Fortunately, there exist alternative ways of getting them, which I'll get into as I talk about the stages. Let's start with Cloud Man stage. I must admit I like the boss jingle music.
probably my favorite in the Classic series so far. Cloud Man stage contains cloud obstructions that block your view of where to land on platforms, and even weather changers that cause the stage to start raining. This also leads to problems because then there's parts in the second half of the stage where you can't see where you are jumping without being up close and personal. However, you still have Rush Coil, and it's definitely recommended if you want to get some items. Now it's time to fight the boss, Cloud Man. He's actually a really fun boss to start off with because it's about timing your jumps to avoid his lightning attacks and making sure you hit him with your charge shots while he's floating down. It's also really fun to slide under him when he's moving around the stage. When I fought him again at the end of the game, I noticed he tends to suffer from Spark Mandrel Syndrome with a danger wrap. Next we go to the Junk Man stage. This stage, there's this annoying part where you have to deal with the spiked enemies whose names I can't remember off the top of my head. But then you have to jump off these moving platforms, but you have to be careful because if a piece of junk falls from the top and hits you, well, you are as good as dead! You have to wait for the junk to trigger, then you can jump onto the moving platform. Although, I was once able to get knocked off the platform, but jump onto the junk to keep moving. This is like something you'd be able to do in the Mega Man X games. Finding Jump Man is simple. It's once again a game of reflexes that you have to jump around and hit him with the Thunderbolt, which will stun him momentarily. Next up is Freeze Man stage. The ground is all made of ice because, of course it is! This level actually causes you to think outside the box in terms of getting past obstacles. For example, early on you come across a spit of spikes, that's simply too far for you to make with your jump, so you have to wait for these enemies from the ceiling to drop icicles for you to jump on. I really like this because it requires you to use your head rather than just jumping into a scenario. Freeze Man is easy enough, the Junk Shield is AMAZING! This is probably the best shield weapon in the entire Classic series. It hones in on enemies, so that way you can just sit back and watch a whole bunch of junk pound the robots. Now, before I go into the fourth stage, it's here I went back to previous stages and started exploring. Once you get the Rush Search, you open up a lot of possibilities. Like here, where you find the Escape Unit, which allows you to leave stages you've already completed at any time. Or just going back to stages to find these letters that spell out Rush's name. Using the Freeze Blast on one of these weather machines in Cloud Man stage causes the stage to start snowing, which allows you to see the invisible platforms. Or here in Junk Man stage, where you can freeze the flow of lava. I really like this as a mechanic, going back and exploring old stages to find items that you miss. This sense of exploration really elevates Mega Man 7 since before, I never had a reason to revisit stages unless I missed something. I really love using the weapons to influence the stages in ways you couldn't before. Now let's do the fourth stage, Burst Man. This stage brings back underwater mechanics so Mega Man can jump as high as he wants, and in Mini Boss that's pretty run of the mill. Also a new mechanic, rising water while Mega Man will rise with the water while having to avoid mines, and the return of disappearing and reappearing blocks. But I had rushed yet by this point so I just cheesed through it without doing it. <laughs> there isn't much to say about Burst Man, he tries to knock you into the spikes on the ceiling and his bubbles can block the freeze blast, but with him down you've beaten all the robot masters in the game, right? After defeating them, you get a cutscene of Mega Man and Dr. Light wondering about Base and his motives. We do see that both Mega Man and Dr. Light are very, very trusting, which is a reoccurring problem. But no time for that, Dr. Wily is attacking the robot museum, so you have a mid-stage, which is new. The mid-stage is nothing special, just go through, see a bunch of old robot masters on display. Wily makes his escape with a Gutsman display, what is with his heart on for Gutsman? The clown boss is actually a bit tricky. You have to blast its head off and hit it while it's on the ground, but the only thing that will reach it are charge shots. Too bad you can't duck in this game. Now we get four new stages, but I want to talk real quick about the items you can find in Mega Man 7. With all the Rush letters, you get the Rush adapter that lets Mega Man combine with Rush. It works the same way it did in Mega Man 6, except now you can shoot fists that hone in on enemies. You can rescue Bead, who doesn't attack enemies anymore, but will save you from bottomless pits. I really like this mechanic, it's a definite improvement over before. You can also find Proto Man in various locations. Once you find all three, you have to fight him in a pretty fun boss. Once you beat him, he gives you his Proto Shield, which I didn't use much. It only works when you're standing still, so not much of a point. So first up, let's do Slash Man stage. It takes place in something that's a lot like Jurassic Park, but with robot dinosaurs. Yeah, that'll work. Early on, there's a part where you need Rush because Mega Man is not quick enough with his jumps to get across these moving logs that remind me of the sequence from Super Mario Bros. 2. Then you fight a pretty fun mini-boss in a giant T-Rex. This reminds me of the Dragon Balls from Mega Man 2 in a way, except on the ground. Slash Man basically suffers from Spark Mandrel Syndrome, 
whenever you hit him with his weakness. So you have to be careful his red substance because that will keep Mega Man from jumping or attacking until he gets hit. It's hard to avoid as well, but one down, three to go. Next up is Spring Man stage. These stages contain lots and lots of springs and it's actually really fun to bounce around on them. It really adds a sense of platforming to the levels you have to carefully time your jumps on the springs to onto the platforms. Fortunately, you aren't punished for it as you just fall to the bottom of the level and have to work your way back up. It's here you get the Hyper Bolt which will reduce the cost of items in Auto Shop. Very useful item. Spring Man is a lot of fun to fight too. It's all about using the Slash Call for one-on-one -on -one damage. It's like having a fist fight in Mega Man or the closest you'll get to it. I also really enjoy using the slide to keep the pace up. Next we'll do Shade Man stage. It takes place in a vampire's castle like Castlevania. What sticks out to me about this stage is the pumpkin head mini boss. There are actually two ways of damaging it, and each way you damage it unlocks a different pathway that leads to hidden goodies, so it really encourages two playthroughs of the stage to find everything. I really like this mechanic. This stage also contains some story elements as Mega Man will find Base wounded, and Mega Man will have him return to Dr. Light's lab for repairs. Too trusting, aren't you, Mega Man? Shade Man is a bit of a trickier boss than normal because I had a hard time dodging his dive that allows him to regain health, but eventually the noise crust takes care of him pretty easily. Finally, that leads us with Turbo Man stage. This stage contains tires that are attached to the ceiling, so if you hit a tire while you are jumping, you fall into a pit of spikes, and there's also a way that sends you back to just before the tire section if you're not careful. Turbo Man is a bit of a tricky boss. Hitting him with a wild coil will always cause him to turn into a car. I didn't realize this until later, but you have to wait till he revs up to jump out of the way. So with that, you'll have beaten all eight Robot Masters, which means only one thing. You get a cutscene that plays that reveals that Base and Trouble are Dr. Wily's creations, and they stole the enhancements Dr. Light was going to give the Mega Man and Rush. This just keeps happening, doesn't it? Time to go to Dr. Wily's castle. The first level is notable because you have these segments where the room goes dark unless you jump, and there are parts where the platforms spin and knock you off into a bottomless pits or spikes. This took some practice. Definitely use the rush adapter. Eventually you'll come to another boss fight with base and he's pretty easy. It's nice to give Mega Man a rival who can fight him on equal terms. This is quite the battle, going toe to toe with base and eventually emerging victorious. The boss of the stage is the Guts Man's robot that likes throwing you into the ceiling. I like to use the slash call to get up close and personal. The second stage, there's not much to say except for when you have to have another boss fight with base who combines with Trouble, who invites you to do the same with Rush. I really like this fight, it feels like the culmination of a rivalry. Which is better, the old model or the new and improved one? And eventually, you win. Thus setting the stage for Mega Man and Base's rivalry to continue. The turtle boss is a bit of a pain because if you get hit by its fire, Mega Man will freeze in place for a while. Nothing much to say about the third stage, but the boss is really fun to fight. Jumping on missiles and hitting with a slash call, it's definitely very up close and personal. But that leaves one more level, and that's fighting the eight robot masters again, and finally confronting Dr. Wily. His first form is pretty easy. Just hit him with the Thunderbolt and dodge his attacks. But then he goes into Wily Capsule number two. This time he reappears and disappears and fires a nearly impossible to avoid projectile that can damage you in one of three ways. This wouldn't be so bad in and of itself, but if you run out of lives here, you gotta fight all eight robot masters again. The last few games you had a bit of a break in between fighting Wily and the robot masters, so why couldn't it be the same here? Save your energy tanks for this boss, and I personally use the Freeze Blast since it's multi-directional. This is classic Final Boss Syndrome. Your hands start to sweat. You grip the controller. He's almost dead. Almost dead and... YES! So Wily pleads for mercy again, and Mega Man actually contemplates just shooting Wily, which is... bold. Wily even backs away in fear, but reminds Mega Man that a robot can't harm a human being. Now here's where we get some translation differences. Mega Man says, I am more than a robot. Die, Wily! While in the Japanese version, he doesn't say anything. Regardless, the matter is taken out of his hands as Base teleports Wily away. From there, we get an awesome shot of Mega Man walking away from Wily's exploding fortress. Such a badass moment. Eat your heart out, X. You'd be watching the carnage. Mega Man just walks away. So that's Mega Man 7. 
I actually think it's a high point in the Classic series. From its sense of exploration, which rewards replayability, fun combat system that is incredibly fast-paced, and great weapons to use, Mega Man 7 is well worth your time. It's a shame it got overshadowed by the X series, which I love, don't get me wrong, but Mega Man 7 is a damn fine game.